and you do see bodybuilders who have abused steroids have significantly reduced ejection fractions, which is basically how much blood is able to leave the left ventricle. In combination with heavy resistance training, which also grows the heart, you can see this starts to become a dangerous mixture of a very thick heart. Hey guys, so I thought I'd do a post on the ancillaries that you need to be measuring if you're on TRT and the things that you should be doing if you want to maximize your TRT journey. I get messages from guys all the time saying, hey, I've just started TRT. What more do I need to be doing in order to make sure that I'm healthy and safe? And in this video, I'm gonna discuss all the things that you should be doing on top of TRT to make sure that you monitor what TRT can sometimes change in your blood work. This is more a preventative video so that you know the things you need to do in order to make sure that TRT is not messy with your blood work in any significant way or your health in any way that you don't want it to. Obviously, TIT can change some downstream and upstream effects in your body. So making sure that these are all in check is gonna be key to stay healthy on TIT. The first one is blood pressure. Now, testosterone does seem to have differing effects on different people, but one of the key things that it can increase is your blood pressure. Testosterone, as you can see in this image, can upregulate angiotensinogen gene expression, renin activity, and angiotensin type one receptor expression. And as you can see, increases in in any of these things can significantly increase vasoconstriction and therefore increase your blood pressure. Some guys even on 150 milligrams of tea per week can have like 140, 150 systolic over like 90 diastolic blood pressure. So making sure that your blood pressure is not super high is gonna be key to your long-term health. How do you decrease your blood pressure? Ensure you're not running super physiological or sports TRT. 200 milligrams a week is not true TRT and is gonna put you almost certainly at over super physiological T levels. Reducing your salt intake, increasing your potassium intake if it's low, losing excess body weight. And I would argue, in another video I might go into this, but I would argue a 5%, 315-pound bodybuilder is less healthy than someone who's like 30% body fat, doesn't train, and is 315 pounds. But we'll go into that another time. Exercise regularly, cardiovascular training, reducing your resting heart rate, and turning on the AMPK pathway, reducing excessive alcohol, ensuring you're sleeping enough and you're having enough quality sleep, reducing your stress and incorporating the sauna. I've done a few videos on this, but this significantly reduces your blood pressure. And if all of that fails, something like an ARB, angiotensin receptor blocker, can help reduce your blood pressure quite significantly in the research by like 30, 40%. And personally, I use an ARB, but it is something that can be quite beneficial if all of the above fail and you're still not able to reduce your blood pressure on TRT. Keeping in mind that some people just need ARBs in everyday life as you get older, the arteries and our circulatory system gets less flexible and therefore you can be more prone to increases in blood pressure as a result of just everyday life. So an ARB may be something that you may want to speak to with your doctor if you, for the life of you, just cannot get your blood pressure down on TRT. Blood thickness and heart health. This is the second category and this is certainly something to keep in mind. Dallas McCarver comes up as a key example here. Obviously he was taking far greater than TRT levels. He was on enormous amounts of steroids. However, the idea is that we do have androgen receptors in the left ventricle of our heart, our heart being a muscle, it will respond to androgens and it will grow in kind, dose dependently on how many androgens you're taking. Now, having a thick left ventricle is very dangerous for electrical abnormalities and your general electrical and structural ability of your heart to beat. If you're having significant exposure to androgens chronically, then your heart morphology and structure will change and therefore be less flexible and not able to beat as well. And you do see bodybuilders who have abused steroids have significantly reduced ejection fractions, which is basically how much blood is able to leave the left ventricle. In combination with heavy resistance training, which also grows the heart, you can see this starts to become a dangerous mixture of a very thick heart in conjunction with the fact that TRT and androgens in general can increase red blood cell production. You therefore get increased viscosity of your blood. Hematocrit levels can be over 54% in a lot of cases with guys who are taking steroid cycles. Thick blood and a thick heart lead to significant issues and dangers and are risk factors for heart attack and stroke as well as arrhythmias and dangerous electrical abnormalities in your heart. So ensuring in your blood work that your hematocrit is not too high and ensuring that you get regular heart scans usually once every 12 to 18 months to ensure that the actual structure of your heart is not being damaged or changed in any significant way is really important. And then in terms of the blood thickness, if it is running too high on the blood work, donating blood will drop it immediately. Dropping dose 
may also be a longer term option. If your blood thickness is too high, it's probably telling us that your dose is too high and a Band-Aid solution is to donate blood and phlebotomize and get rid of the excess thickness in your blood. But a longer term option is probably to recognize that there's a reason the red blood cell production is too high. And the reason might be because your androgen load is too high as well. Hydration is also a really important part. So ensuring that you're hydrated before your blood test to ensure that your hematocrit is not super high. And then there are certain supplements. One of the good ones that can drop at about four to five points is grapefruit juice. Quite a significant reduction here. So that may be something that you think about too. And then in terms of the scans, like I said, ensuring that you get an EKG or ECG, as well as something like an echocardiogram, which actually looks at your heart itself, is going to be key to ensuring health in this category. Third category is your lipid panel. We know that androgens can significantly mess up your lipids, increase your LDL and reduce your HDL or good cholesterol. So checking your LDL in your blood work is probably the most important thing here to avoid that plaque buildup over the course of your life, which of course leads to heart attack and cardiovascular mortality. And for some guys on heavy cycles, it might might also be worth doing a very low density lipoprotein test to break the LDL value down into subfractions and identify which subfractions are most prevalent in your blood. And by breaking the LDL value down into the size density, electrical charge and structure of which actual LDL particles are the highest in your blood can give a much better insight into how much of a risk something like a heart attack will be in the future for you or how much plaque you're accumulating in your arteries. Also adding in apolipoprotein A1 and apolipoprotein protein B and the ratio is a great idea. Now ApoB is a primary component as you can see in this image of LDL and the ratio is a very powerful predictor of heart disease risk as backed up by numerous studies. ApoB is a component of all atherogenic or potentially atherogenic particles which just mean ability to deposit plaque including like I just said very low density lipoprotein as well as intermediate density lipoprotein and LPA and just so you know each of these particles contains one molecule of ApoB. So basically, by measuring the ApoB level in your blood, we basically get a direct measure of the number of plaque depositing lipoproteins in circulation that could add plaque to your arteries and lead to significant heart attack risk later on. So that's really important. Staying healthy on TRT is like basically not having a heart attack. So you want to make sure that your LDL and in particular the ApoB level is not super high. The fourth category, of course, of staying healthy and really this is probably more like actually functioning well on TRT is looking at your neurosteroid levels, pregnenolone, DHEA, sulfate. Both pregnenolone and DHEA are, like I said, neurosteroids and they modulate neuronal processes within the human brain that are higher up in the cascade of cholesterol to testosterone. Now, some men, once they start TRT, they're getting rid of the conversion of cholesterol to testosterone and that pathway goes and they can have slight decreases in pregnenolone and DHEA as a result because some of these enzymatic pathways are not actually needed anymore because the final conversion from cholesterol to testosterone is not actually being stimulated by the LH or FSH signaling from your brain. And luteinizing hormone is in control of the uptake of cholesterol into steroidogenic tissues like the adrenal gland and where testosterone is mainly produced in the testicles, gonads. And on TRT, you're pretty much getting rid of LH. It goes to a value of zero and it can certainly reduce your circulating levels of pregnenolone and DHEA. On TRT, we know that LH levels fall to zero. So the guys that do have low levels of pregnenolone and DHEA already can be very affected once they start TRT a lot more, which can lead to some pretty nasty cognitive side effects. Both pregnenolone and DHEA are very strongly implicated in spatial awareness, cognitive function, and memory enhancement. So deficiencies here, you can imagine, have guys you know not feeling great. And this is why I get guys messaging me, my blood work looks great, but I can't remember things. I feel like I have brain fog, even though my testosterone is at like 800 nanograms per deciliter. And I go and get their pregnenolone and DHEA checked, and they are either very, very high or very, very low or out of the reference range. And that is going to be a significant cause as to why they're not feeling great. As you can see in this image, basically no DHEA is being created when the HPT axis is shut down using acetylene. So acetylene is a GnRH antagonist that pretty much inhibits gonadotropin release. So in this study, there was no LH being produced in the acetylene plus zero HCG group. But once HCG was introduced, which is a mimic of LH, you start to see that intratesticular DHEA increases obviously not right to the baseline level, but you do get dose dependent increases in DHEA production, proving that LH is actually in control of how DHEA is released into the blood. And therefore no LH often leads to guys having much lower levels of DHEA and having these cognitive side effects as a result. So checking your DHEA and pregnenolone levels on a blood test is a really good idea if you're not feeling great on TRT and you want to maximize and 
optimize your journey. And then the final category, I've just done a video on this, so if you're interested, check it out. But E2, estrogen management is a huge one. Testosterone can be directly aromatized into estrogen by the enzyme aromatize. What an original name, but basically it can be converted into E2. When you have more testosterone, you sometimes get more conversion of testosterone to E2. But this enzyme is highly prevalent in adipose or fat tissue. So guys who are high body fat and start TIT can have significant issues with high E2 symptoms like lower libido, like blood pressure increases, like feeling puffy, like gyno. So dropping the body fat on TRT can be a great idea to reduce some of this enzyme activity. And then of course you get guys who want to crush their E2 completely with the use of an AI. This can also cause issues like dryness and lack of water retention and irritability and anger. So E2 seems to do best in a narrow range. I've done a whole video on this, as I've just said. Check out my channel if you're interested in me delving deeper into estrogen management. But needless to say, it is important to control your E2 on TRT and ensuring that it is within a narrow range is going to be key for your overall health and your overall well-being on TRT. So guys, that's a little rundown, a few categories here on how to actually maximize your TRT journey and what you need to be doing if you've started TRT and you're not quite sure the next steps. Thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you in the next video.